I call to order the March 10th, 2021 meeting of the Springfield Board of License Commissioners at 5.30 p.m. on Zoom. Uh, all commissioners are present, so we have a quorum and we will continue. The first order of business is approval of the minutes of the hearing of February 24th. Has everybody had an opportunity to read the minutes? Yes. All right. Did anybody have any questions or corrections? No. no. All right. Hearing none, I make a motion to approve the minutes for the Springfield Board of License Commissioners hearing held on Wednesday, February 24th, 2021. Do I have a second? Second. Commissioner Quade. Yes. Commissioner Spinoza. Yes. Commissioner Siciliano. Yes. Mr. Signatory, yes, thank you. Uh, I'm gonna go to, we have a continued hearing for an all alcohol restaurant license for Hemel's Bar and Grill, 278 Main Street, Indian Orchard. This is uh, the continuation of the hearing from the last meeting. And uh, Himako, do we have any public input since the previous hearing? No, Mr. Chairman. Commissioners, do you have any questions? No. Oh. Kimberly, Orlando, do you have anything you want to add? No, sir. Okay. Uh, make a motion. We go into discussion and vote. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. I lost my commissioner page. Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa? Yes. Commissioner Siciliano? Yes. Commissioner Signature? Yes. Okay. We've had no public input since the previous hearing. And uh, I, unless anybody has any objections, I would make a motion that we approve this uh, petition for a new alcohol restaurant license for Yad Food Bar and Grill Incorporated, BBA Hemmels Bar and Grill, located at 278 Main Street in the Orchard, Kimberly Campbell, Manager of Record. Do I hear a second? Second. second. Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner Estimosa? Yes. Mr. Siciliano? Yes. Mr. Signature, yes. Congratulations, Kimberly. Do us proud. Don't let anybody in there that's going to cause trouble. Congratulations. Will do. Thank you. With all due respect, yeah. thank you guys so much for your time. We really appreciate it. You're very welcome. Take care. Love. All right. Have a good one. Good night. Have a good one. You too. Good night. Okay. Let's move on to a continued petition for a new package store beer and wine license for Sparky's on 429 Boston Road, Sanjay. And Sanjay, provide yes. a letter. Uh, this is the continuation of the previous hearing. And commissioners, uh, Namako, has anybody provided any public input since the previous hearing? No, Mr. Chairman. Actually, in they were not, the matter wasn't actually heard in that previous meeting because he was still before the planning uh, board or committee. Right. So this is the first hearing, not yes, a continued sir. hearing. Yes, okay. Mr. Chairman. Oh boy. All right. So this is on the agenda under continued hearing. So Sanjay, uh, tell us uh, about your proposal. Okay. So uh, we have a gas station convenience store. Uh, I own this place from last five years. Uh, since we own, there is a lot of things happen to the convenience store regulation, like mental ban and everything. So the business was hurting before I never wanted to apply for it because we had a, enough business to survive and everything. But now it's, we are struggling. So we were looking for something to add on to cover the business that we lost. And also customer were always asking, they, they like one stop uh, shopping. So uh, it would be helpful to customer. Uh, we went to neighborhood hearing planning and uh, now we are here to do the same. Um, we have a lot of stuff at the store that we're gonna discontinue like some of the groceries and everything. And we're gonna have a one corner and some cooler that we're gonna put in. So customer can have uh, everything at one stop that they can shop. All right. 
and you are going are you going to be the manager of record is that correct yes have you ever been the manager of record at a licensed liquor serving uh, establishment in massachusetts before yes i'm i also own the mobile down the street near the uh, i also own the mobile down the street near uh, right across from friendly's same on boston road uh, oh, oh, oh. okay way down yeah. almost on the wilbraham line Exactly. Yeah. So uh, a right. manager, a manager there too. But uh, I have a helper at both places. So we have a system manager. So I can uh, manage the both the nearby location. So you are going to be the you're the manager of record at that mobile station as well as this location. Yes. Okay. And you feel you can do that effectively? Yeah, we have a. Uh, uh, enough employees and we have, I can go to like both stores at the same time that I usually do. Uh, we have uh, my partners. I also have a partner who helped me run the businesses. So uh, that's the plan. And uh, usually it's uh, like, I put like 30, 40 hours each store. So I think it's kind of full time there anyway. Well, if we have a violation and the ask where the manager of record is and he's at the other store, that's not going to bode well for you. Do you understand that? Yes, I do. We well, expect the manager of record for this locate each location to be essentially their full time job and for them to be there the majority of the working day. Right. So, I don't know how the rest of the commissioners feel about this, but um, you're a couple miles apart from this other location, correct? Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, so you're claiming that you're working 30 to 40 hours a week at each location? Yeah, that's what I do right now. Uh, okay. All right. How many employees at this store will you have selling alcohol? Uh, during the hours of operation, uh, both stores are 24 hours, but I'm planning to close this store for 24 hours. Uh, for not doing it a business at nine, the other 24 hours. So both places have like three employees each. Also my partners, uh, that they, they work at the store. So, uh, we are enough sufficient at the register. So, so what is the number? You have a number three, three each, each store has three employees, three, three people selling alcohol. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. All right. Are those, all of those, are you TIP certified? Yes, sir. And all of your employees are TIP certified? Yes, at one location is, but this location we haven't started yet because we don't have the license. Okay, well, it's time to get going on that because once right. you receive the license, everybody has to be TIP certified that is selling alcohol. Exactly. Also, a... yes, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, so also I sent uh, Mr. Nimak on a video of my register system that how we operate that every time if we scan the beer, uh, automatically the register will ask for a bud date. Yeah. And uh, pretty soon we'll be able to scan the ID too. Right now we don't have ability. We have to punch the date, uh, approve it, saying that yes, we checked the ID. And then we sell it for cigarette and tobacco. I have a wonderful history. I've been in the business for uh, since I was like 22 years old. So about 25 years. I don't have any violation for cigarette or uh, 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 beer or wine. So when the register prompts for an ID, you actually ask for the ID, right? Now you don't just ask the person for their birthday. No, no, of course not. No, if they, they, they the register asks, like, is the person looks over forty? If you press yes, then, then then we don't have to put the birth date. But if then you check the ID and we'll scan the ID in order to make that register work. Okay, it's at your peril if you guess wrong. You understand I'm sorry? that? It's at your peril if you guess wrong. Right, right, right. No, I know. Right. But okay. that's why the, the state law says that you have to ask if, 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 if they're over 40, 40, look like over 40, then you don't need to ask. But we ask anyway, because the register always makes us ask. Okay. Um, and you live where, sir? I live in West Springfield. West Springfield. Okay. And 
you appeared before the Pine Point Neighborhood Council, is that correct? Yes, sir. They visited everything, the store and everything. Okay. So I have a letter I forwarded to the commissioners. I don't know if you've had an opportunity to read it yet. Uh, Mr. Patel, regarding your request for beer and wine license to be obtained by your business, Sparky's, let it be known the Pine Point Community Council had via Zoom meeting to discuss the matter after careful discussion and thought the Pine Point Council voted unanimously in favor of your proposal. Thank you for continuing to be a good neighbor of the Pine Point community. Sincerely, Mary Culver, Secretary of the Pine Point Community Council, a letter dated March 4th, 2021. So you have the support of the Neighborhood Council. Um, commissioners, do you have any questions? Yeah, just a uh, comment, uh, Mr. Chairman. I know, understand that he's only two or three miles away from each location. However, he's responsible for if anything happens at either location. Uh, do you have someone that's competent and that's reliable uh, if anything happens at either one of those locations when you're not there? I mean, not just a person, but someone who is competent and reliable. Yes. We also have owner. Uh, one owner is uh, a computer science graduate. Uh, she's a, a wife of doctor. She's very punctual. The other person is uh, my friend, and uh, we own that business from last five years, and he helped me manage. Uh, so we both list that they're, they're not only employees, but they're also the owner. So they, ha they do have a, their stake to do the good job. Okay. Have you thought about perhaps assigning someone else to be the manager of record for one of the locations? Sure, I can do that. I can do that. But uh, uh, I mean, I, I, I do it myself. So uh, I, can, I can have my partner put it, put their name as a manager. Sure, I can do that. If that's yeah. the, the, the request that if you say that, 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 that can be done. I, I, I would feel more comfortable if there was someone else assigned, you know, to each okay. different person. I don't know about the other commissioners. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. I definitely okay. agree with that. But can I, can I ask you one favor? Can I get my name in this store? Because I, I go this store more at the other store. I have my partner that the mobile, because uh, I also own the store across the state, which is just a building I own. Uh, more uh, the the car dealership that we open up the new one uh, at the 484 Boston Road. So this is close by. So I, mostly I'm here. So can I change my manager's name at that location? Either one. Mobile? Either one. Yeah. Okay. Good. So you're telling the board that your partner yes. is more often at the other store. Exactly. So uh, I, I, you can put it in a condition that uh, if whatever the way you want to put it, uh, that I will change manager's name as at the mobile station. Okay. Well, we're gonna we're gonna take your word for the fact that you're gonna come back. Oh no, of course, because I have to live in the town, right? <laughs> so. All right. Okay. All right. Any other questions from anybody? No. no. Did you say you own the plaza right across the street? Yeah, I bought that recently. The, the closed car dealership from uh, uh, Matera. Oh. Okay, so we are, yeah, we are putting, uh, uh, I have a tenant who's going to go in. And sell cars? Yeah, sell cars, mechanic. They're going to do all tire and a lot of things. So hopefully it will work out good. Okay, and then they can drive across the street and buy gas from you. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> if okay. I have a good relationship, I guess. Commissioners, any other questions? No. no. Okay. Uh, Sanjay, the the license commission operates the same way the planning board does with the bifurcated hearing. So right. we're, we're going to uh, close the hearing at this point and continue it for two weeks allow public input, and then we're going to see you back here in two weeks for the other half of the hearing. Sure, and I will start the process for the mobile in between two oh, weeks. That would so. be nice. If we can receive a change of manager request within two weeks, that would be very nice. Okay, we'll do that. Okay, so I would make a motion to continue this hearing to the hearing of March 24th. Do I hear a second? Second. Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa? Yes. Commissioner Siciliano. Yes. Mr. Signator, yes. We will see you in two weeks, Sanjay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Yeah. All right.
right. I want to skip down to uh, Mr. Ross Cotton, who was apparently brought in off the slopes in uh, Switzerland. And uh, this is for a new late renewal of the all alcohol GOP license for the Barney Carriage House. So it says 200 Trafton Road. I don't know what the actual is that the actual address up there, or is it Crowdy Grove Road? Or it, Mr. Chair, uh, good afternoon. It is the actual address there, at least the one that we've used uh, for the last uh, eight years. Okay. So this is a, a, a so this is an annual license there, Peter, correct? That is correct, yes. Okay, and this is a late renewal, and uh, traditionally you tell the board why you're late. Yeah, I, I appreciate it, and again, good afternoon, all of you. Uh, we did not uh, receive the mailing of the renewal, uh, mainly because we're not operating due to COVID reasons at, uh, at Barney right now. Uh, I'm assuming that the renewal was mailed there. And to be honest with you, we never looked for it. We never thought about it. And we're kicking ourselves for having to go through this right now because it's just what it is. So uh, we're hoping uh, our office is in Holyoke, for anybody that doesn't know it, for the Log Cabin, Log Rolling, which is the operator of Barney. So um, we have to go through this process, hoping it's okay with all of you. Okay. So the renewal was sent to the closed Barney Carriage House in Forest Park and they never got it. So commissioners, any questions? No. All right, no. So nothing's changed, Peter. Nothing's changed in the corporate structure. You're still the manager of record. Everything is the same. Everything is the same. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of business there this year, but uh, hopefully it'll build later this year, next year again. Yeah, we're all hoping that, don't we? Uh, all right. Uh, if commissioners have no questions, I make a motion we go into discussion and vote. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor. Uh, no, Commissioner Cade. Yes. Commissioner Espinosa. Yes. Commissioner Siciliano. Yes. Commissioner Signature, yes. Okay, so we have a new late renewal for the Barney Carriage House. Nothing has changed. And they are eager to start a banquet business for this summer. So uh, I would make a motion to approve the new late renewal for Log Cabin Banquet and Meeting House Incorporated, deep with Log Rolling, located at Wonder Draft Road, Peter Ross Cotton, manager of record. Do I hear a second? Second. Commissioner Cade. Yes. Commissioner Espinosa. Yes. Commissioner Siciliano. Yes. Commissioner Signatory, yes. Thank you for coming, Peter, and we'll hopefully get that to you immediately. So, to all of you, thank you very much. Have a great night. By the way, this is Mount Washington. Mount Washington. Okay. <laughs> back, back to the slopes. I like it. I like it. <laughs> okay. Next is a, a approval of an expansion of premises for the Irish Ale House, 536 Worthington Street. Attorney Kennefick. Yes, good, after, good afternoon. Um, and uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, William Harvey is also here. He's one of the principals of the Ale House. Oh, he's there with you. Yes. Oh, uh, all right. Okay. Sure. okay. Okay. And tell us what you want to do. Well, uh, is as you probably know from the petition, uh, uh, the Yale House uh, had an opportunity last summer to uh, operate uh, the, uh, the outdoor seating area on a, on a temporary basis. Um, and th this we we've, we're seeking through this petition to make the uh, outdoor seating area uh, permanent. Uh, we've uh, made the application through the licensing commission. We had two here. We had the hearing before the planning board. Uh, which uh, approved uh, the uh, the our, our plan with with rec with uh, conditions. One being that the property uh, not be open after midnight, or the the outdoor seating area itself not not uh, be open after midnight, and that there be no streamers along the uh, the, the fencing. Uh, the Armory uh, Quadrangle Society also uh, we met with them uh, two weeks ago, and uh, after discussion, my understanding they 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 approved. The application and our, our plan. So we're here before you this evening to uh, uh, seek your approval uh, to expand the, the property in accordance with the application that we've submitted. We gave, I think, we gave appropriate notice by way of the instructions to the the abutters and to uh, as well as publication in the Springfield papers. 
Okay. Do you know the number of square feet of this patio? Um, can you know how I don't know exactly. No. Let me see if I can get it from the uh, the drawing. This is the drawing. Anybody hasn't seen it. And this is uh, the Irish Ale House is at the bottom, and Fairbanks Street, Fairbanks Place is on the side. So it's just this. What is this used for? This area now, a parking lot. It's not very big. No, there's a. We have a. a there's a temporary fence up here. A fence. Yeah. Yeah. Is, it, is it completely fenced in? Yes. yes. So it you is. have to you have to enter and exit through the ale house, correct? That's correct. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, there's no, there's no outside entry into the uh, into into that area, and okay. I, I I don't have uh, let's uh, you know if you tr if you trace the the footprint. Um, yeah, I'm trying to do that. It looks like forty feet by something. I don't, I don't know. Eight hundred square feet, maybe. Uh, so we do the math. Uh, it looks like twenty feet. Wait a minute. It looks like forty feet. 40 feet down here from the back of the building to here. And then it goes, it goes, uh, if I can read it right, 20 feet down, then it cuts across 22 feet. And then it looks like this is 20 feet too, and it come, goes all the way across the back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. Um, it's, it's, not a, it's, a, it's not a rectangle, so we could just multiply length by width. Um, but uh, it's, it's it's not an ex I'm just from the few times I've been there. It's not an ex it's certainly not an extensive you know outdoor area for sure. How many uh, how many tables are out there? Uh, I'm trying to think now. There was probably maybe ten tables out there total. Ten. All right. So uh, there's still a uh, seated table service restriction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sir. All right. So until that's lifted, you're going to have to abide by that, right? Yes, I yeah. will. Okay. Uh, and it's sectioned off by a fence, only accessible that's from, from inside the, the restaurant. All right. Does anybody have any other questions? No. 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 Okay. So, uh, this is basically the patio that was used last summer under the COVID restrictions that allowed our to at least serve somewhere outside. And we're successful. There were no complaints last summer. So uh, if there are no other questions, as you are accustomed, there are market bifurcated hearings. So we have to allow for public input on a bifurcated hearing. So uh, we're going to close the hearing at this point to do it until two weeks from now on the 24th. So, you, yeah. so we'll reappear here on the 24th of March, yes. is that correct? Okay, yes. thank you. All right, so I make a motion to continue this hearing to March 24th. Do I hear a second? Second. Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa? Yes. Commissioner Siciliano? Yes. Mr. Signature, yes. We'll see you in two weeks, Attorney Kennefick. Thank you, thank you very much. Good night. Good night, everybody. Uh, All right. Last call. Okay. Next, we have a petition for transfer of license license for El Moro, thirteen thirty three Boston Road. And. That's correct, um, Mr. Chair. This is Attorney Sean Powers representing the petitioner. And uh, we also have uh, Derek Crespo here with us, who uh, intends to be the manager of record. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, uh, commissioners. Um, so uh, as the chair said, we're here on a petition for the transfer of an all alcohol uh, on-premise consumption license from El Moro to Delicia's Restaurant and Catering Corporation. Uh, there is an asset purchase agreement for that. Uh, we are purchasing that from El Moro for $40,000. Uh, I believe uh, Mr. Crespo, who's with us today, is actually at the restaurant, um, finishing up some final touches. Uh, we certainly hope uh, that this transfer uh, will be as smooth as possible. Uh, and hopefully um, the ABCC 
uh, will approve this as well. And we hope to open as early as possible this spring. And um, Delicias does plan on providing a full service restaurant with a variety of international foods. Uh, Mr. Crespo does have previous experience in the uh, food industry. He was a chef in uh, Florida for the last three years. Uh, he does have, uh, his mother does own a restaurant in Boston that has a beer and wine. Uh, and from those experiences working with the heads of restaurant, with the managers, and from the experience he has uh, in talking to, uh, you know, his family with their experience, um, you know, he plans on being at the restaurant about 40 to 50 hours per week. Uh, as the manager of record, ensuring that uh, everything runs as smoothly and according to uh, both Springfield and state law. Okay. Uh, but there's, Mr. Crespo has had no experience as a manager of record in a liquor license establishment. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Um, this is a big responsibility. Uh, one that we certainly don't take lightly here in Springfield. Um, how many employees will be serving alcohol? Mr. Cuspo, so for you. Sorry, I was actually unmuting the... Hello, how are you? Good. It is nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you. I'm new to the city of Springfield. I am trying, you know, to open up a restaurant, bring our um, cuisine, who had, which has been in Massachusetts for at least the last 10 years, since 2010. Um, I do not have prior experience as a manager of record, but I have, you know, I have um, worked with managers of record on liquor licenses, full liquors, um, in Florida, as well as in Massachusetts, which I have acquired experience from. I, I actually own, at this moment, a juice bar uh, slash a natural foods bar in Florida and the restaurant on Boston, which is in the main street. I have also learned, um, you know, from my mother, my family and friends that own restaurants with a uh, liquor license. I have, you know, g uh, gotten to deal in the, the industry and I did learn a lot from mm -hmm. it. Also, I am planning that the re this is a big restaurant that I'm opening. Yes. It's a really, really big one. So. <laughs> It might be from 10 to 12 people serving alcohol. Okay. Are you TIP certified, sir? I am in the process of that right now. Okay. And you heard me tell the previous uh, licensee, we want all employees who are touching alcohol to be TIP certified. That is not going to be a problem because I like to be, I have had, as I'm telling you, I own a restaurant in, in Boston, which I like to have everything by the line. I have never had any type of inspection, even um, even uh, you know, a something that's wrong because every time an inspector comes by, they actually congratulate me because everything is on point. So, well, the addition of alcohol adds a whole new layer to your level of responsibility. I know that because I, I have seen that firsthand with my mother. She uh, still holds a beer and wine in Boston, which has no ha has never had any any issues or inconveniences with okay. voice. Let's keep it that way, okay? Sure. Uh, we have several colleges here in Springfield and we have Wiley College students, students that order uh, fake IDs from outside the country and they are very difficult to spot. I actually, for that, I will have a pretty keen eye because I just myself, uh, I'm in the last semester myself, I'm um, doing it online because, you know, because of COVID and everything, I should finish about next month. I'm in the last semester of college. I am a dual major in electrical and computer engineering. And I have been, you know, I have been moving around college students for a while. So I do know the process and I know how the, I know how they operate. So that shouldn't be a problem. One thing we tell all new licensees is that when in doubt, turn the customer away. It is better to lose a little business than to lose your license. I totally agree. Uh, so we are going to want uh, tip certification for every everyone who is uh, bartenders, waiters, waiters, waitresses, you managers, and we got to keep the certificates current and on file. And if there is a serving to minors or an over serving incident, 
uh, violation, uh, any violation of Mass General Law Chapter 138, you will be answerable to this commission. Do you understand and accept that responsibility? Yes, sir, I do. And if it's one of your employees that uh, overserved someone, we will expect to see a current tip certificate for that. We want to keep them all current and green. Because as you, this is a very large facility. It is. So this is a huge responsibility. Um, um, Tell us where you live, Derek. Right now, I live in um, Jamaica Plain, Boston. So you are telling this commission that you are going to commute from Jamaica Plain to Springfield every yes. every day that this business yes. is open. Right now, I'm actually on Springfield. I've been here since early in the morning. I drive here uh, around uh, an hour, 30 minutes every day that I need to be here. Uh, my restaurant in Boston, it's already been, I don't need to be physically there because my job in that restaurant, even though I'm the, the owner and the responsible party, um, it's to do the financials because my grandparents and my wife are there taking care of the business. Okay. So I am going to be here full time. Okay. Well, this is the city of homes, you know. I'll put my realtor cap on. I'm not a realtor. We have many <laughs> homes here, condominiums. You might consider moving to Springfield. Housing I, is much more affordable I'm here. I'm actually considering, considering buying a home here, you know, because I'm going to be here a lot. So it's going to be uh, once we start, because right now, you know, because of COVID, everything is like really restricted yeah. uh, financially. So yes. I can't, you know, I can't be making uh, two big financial moves because this was a big financial move and mm -hmm. then buying a home in the same in the same year. So hopefully once this starts, uh, this, starts this gets going, I can uh, buy a house here and maybe, you know, spend my weeks here and my weekends in Boston or maybe, there you know, go. depends. There you go. Goes. All right. Commissioners, do you have any questions for Mr. Crespo? No. 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 All right. Uh, as you saw with all the previous licensees, we are on a bifurcated meeting schedule. So we have to continue the meeting at this point and we rejoin uh, the, this continue, continued hearing on March 24th when we hear any public input that it, we, uh, this is a recorded meeting. And for the next two weeks, citizens of Springfield can watch this meeting. And if there's any input, we'll hear that on the 24th. And that's when we vote. All right. Okay. That sounds great. Uh, I would make a motion then to continue this hearing to March 24th. Do I hear a second? Second. second. Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa? Yes. Commissioner Siciliano? Yes. Commissioner Signature? Yes. Thank you. We'll see you on March 24th. Thank you. Right. Thank Have you. a wonderful evening. Thank Good you for have yeah. a good night. You too. Take care. Okay. He's bifurcated here. These uh, Zoom meetings tend to go faster. Uh, we have some violations. Some new, new violations. First one, uh, or violation reports, I should say. Uh, this one is a Mardi Gras disturbance. On February 8th, 2021, Officer Carmody submitted a special report to the Strategic Impact Unit after responding to a disturbance at 91 Taylor Street, the Mardi Gras. A copy of this is attached. The report states that three males were fighting on the second floor of the establishment and were separated upon the officer's arrival and left of their own accord. The report indicates that Sam Velasquez was the manager of duty and that the Mardi Gras did not have a security detail working. So this, this little summary doesn't say. Barry, do you know if this was Sunday morning, February 8th, or Monday evening, February 8th? Exactly. It so that the Super Bowl is what day? The seventh, I believe. So this would be Sunday night into Monday morning. Sunday night. So Monday. Morning. All right. So very early Monday morning. All right. They so have security working, but obviously not the level of security they usually have because they're only operating as a restaurant and not as the adult entertainment. There's no there's no adult entertainment. I mean, there's entertainment, but not adult. There's 
was entertainment, but not adult entertainment. And uh, so this this little summary says did not have security detail working, and that is not true. The officer running for the court, what he meant by that is police officers, which sorry he's no because there are none on Sunday evening. Anyway. Okay, so none were required. None were required. Okay, so no no police security detail was required, but Mardi Gras house security was there. They had to. All right, so uh, this was early Sunday morning, and there were three males fighting early Monday morning. Early Monday morning. And there were three males fighting on the second floor, and they were separated and left. Does this rise to a pre-hearing conference or take no action? Mr. Chairman, if I may, if I may add one thing. Certainly you may, Namako. Uh, the report also indicates that the uh, manager, which is um, uh, Vasquez, actually called the cops. He called 911. Sam called. Okay. Yeah. Sam is not the manager of Mardi Gras, though, right? He's Sorry. the manager of the X room. But, so I don't know what he was doing up there, but he was up there. It's just right across the hall, right? I think they're closed right now. So X, X room is closed? That's what he said when I talked to him. They're closed, or at least they were that night. Oh, so he was filling in there. Oh, I believe Sherry was probably next door. And she knew about it when I talked to her. Yeah. That's what was going to say. Sherry's the manager of record. Yeah, right. So Sherry Vi's the manager of record of the Marty Grand. She was over at the 350. Sam is the manager of uh, record at the X Room, but he was working at the Mardi Gras because the X Room was closed that night. <laughs> Thank you for that extra input. How do we feel about this? Is it worth a hearing conference or no? Once they were separated, they left. They were, they were, yeah. they were, they were friends and they grew up together. Yeah. I would I would make a motion to take no action. Right. Do I hear a second? Second. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Cade. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Espinosa. Yes. Commissioner Siciliano. Yes. Okay. So motion is to take no action on this violation. Next one. Saga shots fired outside January 21st. On January 21st at 9, January 21st was a Thursday night. On January 21st at 9.40 p.m., officers were dispatched to the area of 80 Worthington Street for shot spotter activation, indicating eight rounds fired. When officers arrived, they were able to locate three shell casings in the street. Sergeant Rue was able to access video footage 1550 Main Street, which is the building on Main Street that faces Saga. The footage shows an individual coming out of the Saga Club and later firing rounds at a vehicle driving down Worthington Street. A suspect then enters a black Audi with unknown Massachusetts registration and leaves the area. A be on the lookout describing the shooter and vehicle was issued. The incident report states that all employees of Saga stated there were no issues that occurred that night and they were not the ones who called the police. SPD requests that Grand Valley Associates LLC DBA Saga located at 84 Worthington Street. Pedro Prasado, manager of record, be charged with the following violation of 204 CMR 2052. No licensee for the sale of alcoholic beverage shall permit any disorder, disturbance, or illegality of any kind to take place in or on the licensed premise. The licensee shall be responsible whether present or not two counts to wit one failure to call the police and two violation of the security plan, failure to provide video footage. My question is, what, what, what was wrong with the video? on one of the 
once he was outside because there was a group of people already there. So we were able to zoom in and, and see that detail. Um, that's why there were no charges related to that because that's the other video, the quality and the distance, we couldn't zoom in and see. Why are they required to have cameras? Because they have a make and entry thing? I'm assuming they have, they yeah, do they have, have a security plan on file um, for both sites, home and right. side. Okay. They have security plans that are almost identical. All right. Uh, so that's basically. Okay. So they they have a security plan, which says they will have indoor and outdoor video surveillance. There was some sort of renovation done inside the premises, which disabled the cameras, and they apparently were unaware of that. So they have no video footage of their own inside or outside of, of what happened. And when a licensee, and they're going to, I believe all told, if your cameras are not working, you need to notify the commission as to when you discovered that they were not working and when they will be fixed. And I know, no, we get them frequently from Mardi Gras Center Stage. Uh, Dan Kelly will send one over. I have not seen, I don't recall seeing one for Saga. So do we want to have a pre-hearing conference on this? And, uh, you know, when we bring them in, they are going to say they didn't know until this uh, infraction happened. Uh, so therefore, they yeah. thought the cameras were running adequately. Uh, we get that all the time. Yes, we do. They they have also been told to when they come in to do the rounds and to make sure that the system is working. So obviously, they're not practicing that. Correct. Right. Yeah. So I think I we need to bring, yeah. bring them in for a little reminder course. Ab absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I make a motion for a pre-hearing conference then for uh, this incident at Saga. Go here a second. 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 Commissioner Cade. Yes. Commissioner Espinosa. Yes. Commissioner Siciliano. Yes. Commissioner Signature. Yes. Pre-hearing conference. Next violation report is for <laughs> Malacom. Uh, vandalism February 7th. On February 7th at 11.45 p.m., which was a Sunday night. Uh, officers responded to 137 Chestnut Street, Malacom, for a report on vandalism. Upon arrival, officers spoke to Genesis, who holds the manager of record, who indicated that security he told the man he could not leave with the bottle, at which time he became physically aggressive with the staff. She added that the staff was able to get the man outside without the bottle. The man was then observed punching the front glass door and a window on the left side, causing multiple cracks in the glass. Staff provided a school for the vehicle. He left it. Wow. Sounds like they did what they were supposed to. I mean, they, they did everything they were supposed to do. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Any any input? Any objection to a take no action? No. No. Okay. All right. I would make a motion we, that the board take no action on this violation report. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay, uh, Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa? Yes. Commissioner Siciliano? Yes. Commissioner Signature? Yes. Okay. Next one. Christopher's Sports Bar and Tavern disturbance February 18th. Now, February 18th, which was a Thursday, or into Friday, it's February 18th at 12.51 a.m. So it is uh, 1 o'clock in the morning on a Thursday, Officer Martinez, while conducting a directive patrol of the Fayetteville Plaza, discovered a disturbance at 360 Cooley Street, Christmas Tavern. Officer Martinez observed multiple customers of the bar being shoved out of the bar, many falling to the floor. Other customers were holding back a male who was very agitated. The male, a bouncer at Christopher's who was not working, declined medical care and 
Officers did not observe any injury to him. The male did not provide a description of the person who assaulted him and stated he was all set. A bouncer on duty and the female witness told officers that they did not see who, the assault, who assaulted the victim. The bouncer added that he heard yelling and a group forming and then broke the crowd up. Officer Martinez spoke to Maria Armelada, the manager on duty, who provided him with the owner's information and liquor license. SPD requests these reports be submitted to license commission. This is kind of a confusing one. Yeah. Is there any gaps to fill in here? Or? Basically, the it's a group of four guys, one of them had an issue. The officer, he's off duty there. He denied entry to on a prior occasion because he didn't have an ID. Towards the end of the night, they had a little argument. The three, his three friends jumped in. Uh, I'm assuming those are the four people that were being shoved out by the bouncer. Uh, the off duty bouncer obviously. You know, didn't, wasn't hurt, didn't want any involvement. Um, Maria was the manager working. Uh, Christopher later looked at the video. Um, the, the four kids are all now far from going. He doesn't know them by name, only by face, but the employees, the, the volunteers know who they are, so they won't get a lot of back. But the issue was one of these kids had an issue with the bouncer who wasn't working because he had an item entry prior. And it escalated. Um, apparently, it happened kind of quick. By the time Maria got to the front and outside, the officer was already there because he was in that plaza doing the directive patrol. She didn't call, but she, the reason she didn't call was because the officer was already there. You got all that? Yep, I did. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like a, a group of young people who were not happy with the off duty bouncer for a previous occasion started to cause trouble and they were all escorted out. Right. Okay, so do, does this rise to a peer hearing conference or are we good with the take no action? I think we take no action. Uh, no action, Mr. Chairman. No. Okay. I agree. All right, I make a motion to take no action on this violation report for Christopher's. Do I hear a second? Second. Commissioner Cade. Yes. Commissioner Espinosa. Yes. Commissioner Siciliano. Yes. Commissioner Signature, yes. Okay. Last one. This is becoming like a, a weekly report now from Frank's Package Store. Guess who's trespassing at Frank's Package Store? Is this the same guy? Oh, my goodness. All right. February 25th, 6.09 p.m. Officers arrested a known male. I think we all know this male by now in front of 11 Dickinson Street, Frank's Package Store for trespassing. Officers responded to this location in response to a complaint from the staff about four people loitering to include this known male who has an active trespass notice barring him from the property. Officers observed known male sitting on a trash barrel in front of the package store. Officers placed the male under arrest and noted that this man was the same male who was arrested at the same location for the same offense on February 3rd, 2021. Guy just not learning a lesson. I would make a motion we take no action on this violation. Do I hear a second? Second. second. Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa? Yes. Commissioner Siciliano? Yes. Commissioner Signature? Yes. Okay, so no action on that one. And I think we are done. So I will see, anybody else have anything? No. Okay, I will make a motion we adjourn and I see you on March 24th. Do I have a second? Second. Commissioner Cade? Yes. Commissioner Espinosa? Yes. Commissioner Siciliano? Yes. Commissioner Signature, yes. Good night, everybody. I'll see Good night, you everybody. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye.